Hey everybody, it's Andreas. In this video, we're going to look at a airflow alternative called Mage. We're going to talk about the deployment, the user interface, how to create pipelines, how to visualize and explore the data. I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually modify pipelines and add new things to pipelines. We're going to look into testing and we're going to look into the scaling part of Mage. So have fun with this video. Let's talk first about the deployment. If you have used Airflow before, you know Airflow is not super easy to install. Even as a Docker installation, you need to have multiple containers running and the configuration as well is not that easy. With Mage on my computer, I just installed it. It's a single Docker image. You download it, you start a container and that's it. Everything is packaged in there. The user interface, all the libraries you need, basically out of the box, everything, which is really refreshing and really nice. And I love that compared to Airflow. From the scaling part, you can then run this on your local machine. You could also run this in any data center or at any cloud on AWS, on GCP, on Azure. You can also run this in a Kubernetes environment. The scaling works in a horizontal fashion. Let's say you have Kubernetes running. That means for every pipeline that you create, a pod will be started. And the more pipelines you have, the more pods you have, and the more performance you have. So it's pretty cool, pretty nice with the scaling, pretty nice with the setup. Let's talk about the user interface, which is actually where Mage shines, especially compared to Airflow. When you see the user interface immediately, dark background, which I absolutely love and a very, very simple. On the left side, you have a menu with pipelines. This is where you find your pipelines, where you create pipelines with triggers that allows you to actually schedule your pipelines and with pipelines runs. That is an overview of all the pipelines that are running and where you can look into the locks and so on. Very clear, very simple. So let's talk about the pipeline creation. For the pipeline creation, I used a tutorial they have on their site. It's a simple ETL pipeline where you say, okay, let's start with a data loader. In this case, I created a data loader, selected Python and API because I want to query data from an API. And then you get the block. And in this block, you can then access the API or configure the API. The nice thing when you run this, you immediately get a preview of the data that has been loaded from the API. After that, you create yourself a transformer. Same thing, add a new block, add a transformer block to it, put your code in that transformer block. And then on the right side, you see the tree. And in that tree, now you see the load data is going to send data into transform data because there's a line connected between those two. And you immediately see the lineage here, what's happening. Now, once the data is in and we transformed it, you can then say, okay, let's create ourselves an exporter, create a data exporter. And in that we can select here, for instance, an SQL exporter. And then you select the type of database where you want to export the data to, and that's it. Then. It's already connected with it. You see the transformed data is coming in. And on the right side in the tree, you see that now your pipeline goes from loading data, transforming data into exporting the data. Pretty nice, right? Everything in the user interface, very simple. And with that nice overview of, okay, you have your code blocks. On the left, you would also have your file structure. And on the right, you have your tree where you see how does your pipeline look 
How's the data flowing through your pipeline? Now let's look at data exploration. We already seen this in line, right? We in the code, we saw the preview of the data, but you can explore the data even more. And this is how you do it. In this case, with our data loader. Once you have the data loader on the right side, you have your tree, but you can also select here charts. And then you can create, for instance, a histogram of the data. And you can then configure this diagram so that it shows the data how you need it to. But you're not limited to histograms. You can also do line charts, bar charts, and so on. In this, I then created a bar chart for you. And yeah, you can see here, you can basically then look into the data and explore the data more. And that is what a lot of tools don't have. I really like this. It's all in line. It's all within that one user interface. You don't need to go into different pages on the on the UI. It's all in one place. Now with that pipeline, that was pretty simple, right? It was just a loader transformation and then an export. But if you want to do something more complicated, you can add this very easily to this. You go in, you add another transformation part, say transform data to here. And then you simply on in the tree, take it, you draw a line between load data and the transform data. And then these two are connected and the data from the loader flows into the transformation part. Very, very simple. After the transformation, you want to export the data with your exporter. Would be the same thing. Draw the line with the mouse between the transform data too and your export data and then these two are connected and the export data can then actually access the, the the data from these two transformation steps. That's what I really, really like about this. It's very, very easy. And I myself, I'm a visual person. I like having a visualization of some kind, not just for the data, but also for the pipeline. And that is what this tree gives me really cool. Of course, you could bring in something more difficult. You say, OK, let's go at, at some stage here and add another data loader. And then the same thing, draw the line from the data loader to your transformation and then it's data flowing into. Very simple. Also, you can rearrange stuff in the middle here in your code view and you can add this at any point. You can add a new block. Now, testing is a big thing. Very often writing tests can be complicated and can be annoying in this. Super simple. You go into your code, for instance, here in the loader, you add a test with add test, you add a test function. And in that function, you ask, okay, the data that we get is that above a thousand rows. If it's not, throw an error. If it is, everything works. And with that, already the first test is done. So very, very simple. Of course, you can go more complicated. You can add great expectations or other functions there, but Really, let's be honest, that's everything you need, at least in the beginning. Then we get to the point of scheduling. Whenever we talk about airflow alternative, scheduling is a big part. Here you go into your menu on the left, select trigger, and then you select which trigger type. Schedule, I think is very, very straightforward. Just a standard schedule once a day, once an hour or every five minutes or whatever you want to do. Then you can also use event. And this is actually something very nice. Let's say you want to act whenever something has dropped into your data lake on AWS into S3. You can configure here a trigger for this. So whenever a file gets dropped in there, actually then your pipeline starts running and starts processing data. Pretty cool, but still standard. What I like the most is actually the API feature. You can configure your pipeline that it starts whenever you make a API call to your mage instance. And that is really cool. Would have helped me a lot of times before. Now we were talking about ETL here mostly. That's ETL, that's a simple ETL process, but mage allows also streaming and ELT. So if you have a model in DBT and you want to, for instance, like I did in my course on in my academy with DBT and Snowflake, if you have that model, you want to transform data that lays within Snowflake, you can integrate your DBT models in Mage and then run the code and the data actually gets transformed within your data warehouse. So you have EL, 
you get the data into it and then you have the T where you then transform the data in the warehouse. Nice. Also Spark, if you have Spark code and you have a Spark cluster running, you can code within Mage with Spark and then Mage connects to your Spark cluster, for instance on Databricks, and then runs the code there. So for the scaling aspect and the opportunity of what you can do with it, very nice and all packed in a nice user interface. So this is a quick overview of what you can do with Mage. I really love where the industry is going, where the tools are going. It's very simple to generate pipelines, very easy to understand, to overview, to modify. And with all the opportunities that you have, a very cool and Mage is something it's absolutely worth trying out. So if you like this, leave a like, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below with what kind of tool you are currently working and if something like Mage would actually be helpful to you. If you're into data engineering and you haven't checked it out, check out my Data Engineering Academy at learndataengineering.com. I leave links to Mage and to my academy below and then see you in the next video. Bye.